calling in JP Sears of Awaken with JP. I think you're an awesome dude. Um, really funny and I agree with so many of the things you say except recently some of your videos where you are criticizing the LGBT community and their stance of being pro-Palestine. So yeah, I'm just going to unpack a little bit of that and hopefully help you to understand deeper layers um, and join this global tide that is washing away settler colonialism and oppression. Um, so in one of your recent videos, you share a reel where there is a woman at a pride parade and she is pro-Palestine and a drag queen says to her, do you know that I would be killed? I would be put to death in Palestine for being LGBTQ. And you kind of are making this point that this woman and other people like her and anybody of LGBTQ identity are idiots or silly. And you've done this in another reel because they haven't understood that they would be murdered in Palestine. Okay, first of all, people are not put to death for LGBTQ identity in Palestine. That's false. Although there is homophobia in Palestine, um, transphobia and many phobias around non-normative identities. However, what you are doing in your reel is you are kind of saying that because there is homophobia in Palestine, that means that it's okay for the US UK Zionist regime to genocide them. Okay, so you are using a form of pinkwashing and you are actually using the LGBTQ minority. You are weaponizing the minority for the imperialists agenda. Because it doesn't make sense to say, oh, there's homophobia in Palest Palestinian society and people of LGBTQ identity are often persecuted there. They're not put to death, but they are persecuted like they are persecuted in many places in the world, like Texas. Right? Everywhere in the world. This whole world is under patriarchy and imperialist occupation and colonization. So it's like for the LGBTQ community, they have been in solidarity with the Palestinian liberation since the early 2000s. We're just seeing a resurgence of that now. And I was reading um, an article by, oh, I can't remember the name of the doctor and the name of his book. I'll put it here in this video. Um, where he, he is a Palestinian, a queer Palestinian, and he writes about how there's always been this um, solidarity between LGBTQ and the liberation of Palestine. Same here in South Africa. We have a very sophisticated constitution with LGBTQ rights and religious freedom rights because we wanted to make sure that everyone has their freedom because we know what it's like to live under apartheid. So the, the quest to decolonize places like Palestine that have been under military rule. I don't know if you're aware because you've, you're, you've grown up in America and the empire, right? So you have Islamophobia in your brain and you have the media, their media in your brain. So you don't know what the UK US Zionist regime has done to the rest of the world in the global south. But Palestine has been under an occupation for um, over 75 years, brutal, violent occupation. And there is a connection between the violence they go through and the homophobia in their own society, right? So LGBTQ people who have fought to have their own identity accepted are, of course, going to root for the liberation of people who are under settler colonialism. Because all of the minorities that have suffered, be that LGBTQ, be that um, a racial minority, be that any minority that has suffered throughout history is because of settler colonialism. So it doesn't, it's not fair to go with this very American media way, which is you're, you're, you're on the so-called right in America, right? You're the red team, the red team and the blue team. And basically both of you guys need to come together and realize that at the, 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 the top, funding both sides is the Zionist lobby in America. And you can read this book by, by Greg Fulton if you want to understand more about who actually has occupied your country. So you were very vocal um, and are very vocal about the Zionist trans agenda in schools and this problem with pronouns and how a man can just walk into women's sports claiming to be a woman and clear up all the trophies, right? 
Now, of course, trans identity is real and trans people are beautiful, but it is not safe and not good and not psychologically sound to have that discussion with a child. Okay, so everyone knows my stance on that and you can go listen to this lecture or watch this if you want to know more about that. And you're very vocal about that, right? About how that, again, once again, the LGBTQ uh, minority has been weaponized by the Zionist American imperialist machine to cause division in American society and to actually hurt children. So you are always vocal about the pinkwashing, the way LGBTQ is used in America, yet you are now using LGBTQ and you are pinkwashing about the situation in Palestine. You are writing off, you are not even acknowledging the fact that there's been settler colonialism there for generations, brutality, violence, violence military rule, and a, an ongoing genocide because, oh, they're homophobic. So this is called Palestinian exceptionalism, right? Where um, another author writes about this, I'll put his name here, where he is saying that in the American, in, in Amer the American political, liberal and Republican political machine, they have framed Palestinians as somehow being exceptional in their homophobia. So that a lot of Americans are just like, oh, well, they just, you know, they hate LGBTQ people, so that's why we can genocide them. But, but there's no understanding or nuance here that Palestine is not any more homophobic than anywhere else in the world, including Texas. So I'm asking you to please come into a deeper awareness. You are currently very much in that polarized red team, blue team in America, you know. And, you know, if the red team is telling you that, you know, to think this way, then you think that way. And you make some comedy or joke video about LGBTQ people who support Palestine being idiots. And that I don't think that that's fair and I don't think that's right. And I think that the LGBTQ um, minority has had enough weaponization and pinkwashing. And you speak against how they're used in America, yet you are using them about your argument in Palestine, as I've just said. Right. And you also tend to make a connection between people who are pro-Palestine being somehow communistic in some way. And I don't know if you understand uh, that the imperialists currently genociding the Palestinians and many other places on Earth, Sudan, Congo, your nation is responsible, is the biggest terrorist on the planet. OK, so I don't know if you're aware of that. You guys are the terrorists. OK. And your Fed is owned by a group of Zionist Jews, the Rothschilds being one of them. So your money economic system is privatized and it's owned by Zionist Jews. So the imperialist UK, US Zionist machine are Zionist Jews. And your fear of communism, do you know what ideology that is? That was created by Zionist Jews. And the Bolshevik Revolution, where over 60 million Russians were genocided, was funded by the same Zionist Jews who fund imperialism. So we need to stop thinking in sides and understand that the head of the predator at the top are the Zionist Jewish elites that have been running the show for generations. And you're also very vocal about COVID and the vaccine mandates and how they actually cross body sovereignty lines. You think homophobia in Palestinian society or any society is bad. Your country mandated vaccinating people with an untested substance that is now actually hurting people. Should we now come and genocide you? So your argument makes no sense. And I would like to also tell you that the people that were responsible for rolling out that um, COVID mandate situation uh, were all Zionist Jews. So yeah, it would be great if you could see beyond what your red team media tells you to think or what the blue team media tells you to think. See beyond Trump versus Biden because they're both players in the Zionistic machine and join all of us who are now vocalizing about dehumanization and the need for decolonization across the earth, including Palestine. So I'm calling you in, brother, because you might not also be aware of this, because I think you might, you might hold Christ dear to your heart. But Jesus was a Palestinian. And the Israelis currently living in Israel, 
They have no Semitic DNA in them at all. It is illegal to take a DNA test in Israel because their blood leads to Eastern Europe. They are converts from 800 CE. And when Jesus was talking about the Pharisees, you bag of dead men's bones, you've been a murderer from the beginning, he was talking about the Zionist Jews. And you, you're probably not aware of the Talmud either, dear friend. So I'm going to drop in a little snapshot here. You can pause and read about the things in their book. So I, I, I would like to encourage you to stop belittling LGBTQ people, weaponizing their minority when you need it, and then using it when you don't, when, you know, changing your tone with, with it the whole time. Having something to say about its weaponization in America, but then weaponizing it in your own argument about Palestine. I don't think you're, you're thinking properly. And yeah, I'm calling you out of this red-blue dualistic machine and come home to your humanity. Jesus' Jesus people and children are being executed right now. They're in an extermination. They've been exterminated. And you tr you're trying to make LGBTQ people feel bad about saying that out loud. No, bro. I'm calling you in. In love and peace. Come home, brother.